Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the 66 Pod. I'm your beautiful host Fatima, and today with me I have three amazing guests: I have Jesse, Lisa, and L. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about forgiveness. You know, it's very hard to forgive. Is yeah. forgiveness is is and it's very mandatory. Like I think it's necessary that we forgive, not just for the other person, but for ourselves. Yeah, and so. I'd just like for us to talk a little bit on how we've been able to forgive. You know, how has forgiveness been from our own perspective? Can I go? Yeah. So, can go. Okay. So, I think the biggest person I've had to forgive is myself. I've really had to... I've really had to learn to forgive myself because... I feel like before now, like I was just moving through life, making decisions and a lot of decisions didn't favor me. And so now that I'm at a wiser point, sometimes when I think back and I cringe, I'm just like, ah, why did you do that? Or like, you know, and a lot of us, we beat ourselves up for certain decisions that we made. And so I'm one of those people where I'm always beating myself up like, oh, why didn't you think about this? Why didn't you? Why didn't? Or the why didn't you use. Yeah. And so I'm now at a point where I need to learn to forgive myself, allow myself to know that it's a growing period. You know, mm-hmm. you can't always have all the answers. And so I'm learning to give myself grace, learning to give myself mercy, you know. So that has been my own little forgiveness journey. So how about you, Lisa? How's your forgiveness journey been? Well, um, I'll still talk about forgiving myself. Um um, which is allow myself to be human mm. because um, in the spirit of being a perfectionist or just trying to make everything perfect, you get to like stumble on yourself so many times. And um, if you, I mean, if you're one person who you don't get to see where you are coming from and where you can improve on, I mean, I think that's like the first step for you to learn how to forgive yourself. I mean, take all of the learnings and then move forward. If you're one that because you are falling, you're going to remain there and just Bring yourself to yourself and um, forgive yourself, basically. Um, forgiving people also has been hard because we are human. And then there are points where they hit you, like, right below the belt. And especially on times where you are not actually expecting. Mm. And um, most of the time, there are people dead to you. I mean, I think that's when it strikes more yeah. for you. And it has really been hard going that path. Um, I would say I'm lucky I don't have so much, probably just a few, but taking learnings from that, it wasn't like really, really easy. There'll be times when you are, I'm praying and, and God is bringing that person back to you, I mean, where you're praying and then he's trying to tell you that you need to forgive this person. Mm. It has not exactly been easy. I mean, like I said, it has not, um, I, I'm not, I'm lucky not to have so many situations of having, um, People that are dead to me hurts me to the point where I can't take you no more. I just have like few and it's okay. So even times when I get to pray and these people come to mind, there's always a tendency for you to drop that prayer point and bring yourself into forgiving that person before you move on. So it has not been easy, but we're trying. That's really yeah. cool. What about you, L? Um, I think for me, I've never had issues with forgiving. I think we have for me we have to define the line between forgiving and forgetting at what point is forgiving complete that's probably where i'd have issues because if we're saying forgiving as in not wanting to avenge or not feeling hurt is that where it stops if we're saying forgiving as in completely forget then i struggle with that i i I feel like i'm not vindictive i don't try to get back at you or anything like that but like um it's hard for me to just let it forget go. The, especially the lessons from it and even like generally i don't think like you hurt me it's hard to get the same vibe back right. you know so it, forgiving is like i let it go like we could still be whatever but like i would never put myself in a position where i'll be in that situation again and i don't know if that if that is a fault on my forgiveness or if that's just me being careful and mm. if i'm saying it's me being careful then it's me not forgetting so I don't know. I think with this conversation, what I would like, what I want to get from it is, at what point is forgiveness complete? Is it the point where you take everything back, like it was normal, or it's like, 
I forgive, but you know, I'm holding on to the lessons. I'm holding on a bit to like what, what I got from that experience. I don't want to experience that anymore. So yeah, but forgiving myself or forgiving others, hundred percent. I don't hold people by their faults too long. I don't hold myself by any faults. I know I'm forgiven by God, and I bask in that. Okay, valid. crazy That's, i mean it's, yeah. it's crazy how much like the little things you do and you don't know how much impact it has yeah, on people which is yeah i i think it's like one of the things that when people say they forgive themselves i don't have an issue with you you know allowing yourself know that you i messed up but i think sometimes we're quicker to forgive ourselves than correcting what we've done wrong we get to a point where we just like oh well uh, yeah i messed up it's whatever we don't really consider so much how it affects the other person. We don't really actively try to get that person out of wherever zone we've put that person in. And it's just like, I've forgiven myself. I've moved on. If you're still feeling how you're feeling, yeah, well, there's nothing I can do. When there's a lot you can do to correct, to like, you know, at least show some, not even necessarily, no, aside remorse, remorse is the smallest form of it, but like actively try to get that person through where you've brought them to. I was I also think that even with self that you said, like even with yourself, you have to get to a point, especially people that are aware that, you know, I hurt myself mm -hmm. this much. You also have to get to a point where you genuinely have to take responsibility of how much you have hurt yourself. And hurting yourself is knowing that you have hurt your inner child. Yeah. And you know, a lot of us we we see it as we don't want to harm children or whatever it is, and we have to get to the point where see yourself as that child again and genuinely apologize, genuinely be a sincere person, know mm -hmm. how you affected your own self to in that situation. And so I have a question of have, has God ever like offended us and we found it hard to forgive God in situations? Mm -hmm. Yes. There are a lot of people like I was talking to somebody recently and you know, she was talking about how she, her dad was sick and she was praying, you know, that. God would do this and you know her dad died and so mm -hmm. she she found it hard to forgive because she, she felt like she had gotten that confirmation from God that God would do this also for me like I'll say a personal story so I have a condition called alopecia and I've had this for a good amount of my life like I don't know myself with full hair and so when I was probably like 12, 13, that was the first time I went to redemption camp. And, you know, I was really praying. I was really trusting. I told God that when I step on this ground, my hair will just mysteriously grow back. You know, I was, I had so much faith. I feel I had so much faith as a 13-year-old. And I went, I spent a whole week. I came back the exact same way. And I found it so hard to believe anything that God was going to tell me. I found it so hard to even forgive, like, how? How would you betray me that way? Like, how would you tell me you're a miracle-walking God? How would you tell me you're a God that makes the impossible possible and you wouldn't do this thing for me? And it's now that I'm getting to the point where I understand why certain things can't come the way I expect. You know, as we talked in previous episodes, how, like, we can't necessarily plan things and think that God would do it the exact same way we have mm -hmm. planned it, you yeah. know? So how like for people here that have found it 
difficult, you know, f- to forgive in a certain way. How has that relationship been? Hmm. Well, <laughs> something that will strike me. Um, I don't think I have any. Um, I don't think I have any situation that's happened where I'm so angry with God to the point where you're finding it hard to forgive or let go of that situation and even the person of God now. I've had it rough, but um, from my experience, I don't think I've had any that has made me feel like, oh, I will not forgive God or this or that um, and hold him, like literally hold him in my heart and say, I'm not going to forgive you for you not giving me this and the rest. What usually used to be the pattern is, I don't get it. I cry it out and um, somehow find solace because there's a way you would also um, suckle up to God and then he's going to comfort you. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it happens. Yeah. 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 So there's a way. So I, I usually get that comfort because most of the time, my first point of call when all of this thing happened, like, oh God, why? Then I will cry and then I will pray. I think that's where the comfort used to come from. Mm. So... Um, that I have to hold a grudge that I'm not, n- and I don't have such experiences. Mm. Yeah. What about yeah. you? Have you had? Yeah, but my, my thing is, uh, my is my basket. I think the way that my basket has to come for us, not that the God. For like two years, it was perfectly fine. Before I come to school, in school, everybody should see God as God it is. And I had, I left, I went home the day before that happened. And I still saw him. Perfectly fine. He didn't give me cash. As a bad day, he doubled the cash. Mm-hmm. For me to receive a call the next day that, ah, the dad has left. Wow. How come? So it was crazy because that was the, that was the time I first told him I prayed. I prayed like, I prayed like, I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to explain it. I prayed my, my life out. I prayed to God that I was becoming like this. I was praying, I was talking to this person. And it was crazy, I was going to be asked to pay the lecturer attendance to drive them so I could go to him every time, like every two days. Oh, wow. I was for him. Like, that was a really crazy time for me. That was wow. the best time for me. I was going there, I was talking to him, ah, this man, I see him, I will just be pretty like that. Wow. This man left you to your wife. You know? So, uh, you know this faith that I, when you pray, when you come to me, that just stand up. So I was really, te- I tested my faith, tested my trust in God there because I believe in something will happen. It was like that week or like when my parents and my mom and our sisters called to go to, they knew about me going to the mother and doing the stuff. So I was like, ah, God, please, this house is happening. So mm. I, I held my hand, like, bro, you don't hold my hand. Mm. Was, ah, this man, you stand, you know, and that was. So it's pretty trying. It's very I always look up everything I to do. So I was expecting nothing like that to happen to my family. But it happened. With my faith, I am not say church boy. I was sent to church. They said me, my siblings, literally all my family to send me to church. So I didn't expect that. So my, my, I, was, I, I would say I found it hard to forgive. Not like I was, I was just disappointed. Mm. Yeah. Really disappointed. Yeah. I would say I was angry at God. I was just disappointed. So, so yeah. Then I, That's really nice. Mm, that's really nice. What about you, yeah. I, I think I'm with Lisa. I think I have never gotten to a point where I, I'm holding a, a grudge necessarily against God. I think there are times when I've been disappointed in terms of not hearing enough from him and not getting what I expected. But I think I'm always thinking long... Not like I'm always thinking long term, but I think in life generally, if, if you everything is always about the end goal, and you could just see situations and how you see it ending is what should control how you react to it at that point. And I know it's difficult when you're in it, but like, even when I hold these things, it's such a short time that I now get to a point where I'm thinking, well, this, I look back and see a lot of things that have happened before that God has saved me and people I care about from. And I just know that, okay, this is one of them and I'm going to get out of it because this is what his word promises and this is what he promises. So when I'm in those kind of situations, I think my greatest frustration is always from the fact that 
why can't I hear from you right now? Why aren't you doing something right now, right now? It's never like, oh, you don't exist at all. So always like, why not now? Like, why is why why can't you change things now? Why can't you change things now? But I always look at it like all things will always things will always work together for good. And if I yeah. see it that way, like if I know tomorrow is going to be great, I won't be too worried about today. I'll now. try to manage and just get through today. And that's just how I always see it. That's really nice. So I want us to relate this whole forgiveness story to the prodigal son. You know, the story of how the boy left his father's home, took all the wealth that he his father had assigned to him and left because he didn't want to be under his father's rule anymore. And when saw the struggles of life, came back. And the father accepted him with open arms. And then we saw how the brother felt a type of way, like, I have been serving you. Yeah. And why haven't I been celebrated in that way? So I would like us to, you know, talk about the forgiveness, forgiveness from both angles, from the brother's angle and from the father's angle, because, you know, both angles are very valid. Why the brother felt that way was very valid and related to a way in our lives or in society today. So, you know, so Lisa, would you take... He's going to go first. Okay. I think this thing is important because okay. even in relationships, you see it, you... Break up with girl. The girl is willing to forgive. He's our friends. <laughs> He's our friends. Are you speaking from experience? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. He's our friends. I'm saying if you try, if you go back to this guy. So most times people around, like, which is the case with that brother, it's like, you know, they're, they're, mm. they're also like factors in terms of how soon you're able to forgive and mm. how well you're able to forgive. And it's just, it's completely insane to, to just see that even as far back as then, but I think the brother's feeling was also valid. And I think even in Christianity today, sometimes we, we think of people that do not deserve like the mercy of God. We look at people and like, mm. why would God bless this person? Why would yeah. God favor this person? Why would God? And then there's the, there's the parable of the sheep, you know, the 99 and the one. It doesn't mean the 99 are not valuable. Literally, they are going to bring the one from sufferness. So you, you've been in 99, you've been enjoying all your life. So, but I guess it's just that feeling of, oh, well, you're bringing some, an outsider, but God loves, Everyone you know, everybody. Loves and it's, if he brings that one, when they kill the ram for everybody to eat, you too, you still eat in it. Chop. So it's still your celebration. Your brother coming back is your celebration as well. And I think the father's response to the child was, you know, all these things are yours as well. Like literally, we are just taking a portion of what's even yours to celebrate your brother. But it's yours. You've been here. And everything like that I have is yours just as well as it's it's your brother's. And you've not had to go through what your brother has gone through. I mean, that those years of eating with pigs and stuff. Mm. I mean, that's a plus. It's something to be happy about. Okay. Okay. So with that, I still feel like I I struggle a little bit with forgiving in the sense of how um sorry i lost my train of thoughts <laughs> yeah, cool. yes so i feel like still with that parable when you said you go for the one and it's just like why why how, why is that one so, so important so, so, that no do you understand like how, why is that one so important and i feel like if i was in the situation of the brother i would definitely feel what he felt like he he insulted you he left your home he you know what what makes you sure that he's not going to do it do again, again yeah. well, you know what makes you like you said you said you, f you struggle with forgetting you know how, does the father forget it's all these things that yeah. add up for me it's just like how do we how do we trust this person again how do we how do yeah. we even with friends like you can't watch your friend go into a toxic relationship see all the abuse and then she's willing to forgive as yeah. a friend like yeah. Why, why you, why, why you don't want better for yourself? You, yeah. so it's like all these things that it's just like, I don't think it's that easy to, so yes, or to exactly. just welcome somebody back into a community that they broke. It's yeah. not like you chase them away, yeah. they, left. Yeah. they left, yeah. But I think the reverse is first of all, we saw that this person was remorseful, wanted to come back. We saw that this person ran back basically on their knees. This person was suffering. This person was, do you know how bad it is for you to? <laughs> To, uh, well, we, uh, well, <laughs> should I take it now? I should finish talking. But, okay, you but literally, you see, this person was eating with pigs. I think in in I think that part wasn't even literally eating with pigs. I think it was just like a Greek term that they used to describe when a situation is is bad. 
I don't know if that's your buying mm. tank, but like it's worse. That's your eating pig food. The, his situation was terrible. So if you're worser. saying you don't, yeah, the situation is getting worse. <laughs> and if you're saying you don't want that person back, is that no more about you not loving that person as you the know. father loves mm. that person? So that's the reverse way to look at it. If you, if you have a brother that you've lived with all your life, you grew up, you played football together, and then you see them in this state. It's not like, oh, they went today, they ball with the one million, then they came back the next day. Then they went with two million. Literally, they went, they did wrong, yeah? They went, they suffered, and you can see them that they're in a state of suffering, and then they come back, and you're pissed off or annoyed that your dad is taking them back. Then I get that angle, but then the second angle is maybe you don't love them as much as you, you claim you do. You are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. You're going to ask me something. <laughs> um, okay, so um, sort of continued. But maybe when we get to heaven, Sha, we'll <laughs> ask God what became of the prodigal son. Yeah. Because I have a strong feeling that boy still went to go and do that. She no, I have no feeling. I am. I can't. I can't. So my... I think what I mean for me, what he's teaching me is it still falls back to some of the learnings that we took from um, the previous episode where. You should stay from the point where you already understand people's shortcomings and you forgive before, mm. before they even have to make mm. the act. Because like I said, till we get to heaven, I don't know what became of the prodigal son. Whether he went back or he became a changed person, I don't know. But also tying back to what you said, when people are just unnecessary and then you just, somebody is just trying to just reach out to them, reach out mm. to them, you leave 99 and go after the one. There's even a song for it, if you go mm-hmm. after the one that is the lost sheep. If I'm bad of the next night, maybe I'll cause riots. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> you not left us there because of somebody that decided to go as strong on their own. Like, how does it even... But if you look at it also, those 99 were being taken care of. Mm-hmm. But those 99, they were once one. Yeah. They were being taken care of. Even the prodigal son, I mean, his brother, his father's response was, everything I've ever had you have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was just a case of him asking, where's my own portion? That mm-hmm. he never asked. Mm-hmm. He probably mm-hmm. would have done something and squandered mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So let's also look at it from the point that when we're trying to reach out to lost people and they are coming back and then they're getting all of the privileges, if you look inwardly, you had those privileges. Yeah. You did. So if, if at all you have to forgive, forgive from the place of you have the privilege, I have the privilege. Maybe I decided not to use mine, but Shall be coming back and let's enjoy everything. I mean, I think it makes it easier for you to understand people and then take them back in. If you look at it from the point of, oh, you are doing so much for him, you're not doing so much for me. Maybe to God, Shah, because I, mean, I feel to God that to God everything is clear and plain. And he's not, he's yeah. not because of Jesse, he's not going to bless Lisa. No, he's never going mm-hmm. to do that. Yeah. So from the point of God, yes, we understand that. But from the point of human beings and learning to live with people, also understand that you can make while you're trying to be a good person you also have privileges accrued to you in some sense, if you check deeply. So when we're trying to look out for the lost sheep, or let's even give an instance when first time has come and then they'll be giving them rice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, wait, I just should not stand up Lisa, and collect rice. Don't go there. Don't go, there. Rice because don't go there because oh. that rice, how that rice saved us through school. We're attending new church every week. So see, please, see. I know there's a young I guy that, out there. I know there's a young about. boy out there that's looking forward to Sunday rice. This see, the a new talk, church. Uh, please don't go there. About, let's not spoil somebody. So yeah, the one so yeah, I'm one just saying, saying let's, 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 not, let's not let somebody starve. That we're always praying that every rice, day. They say we pray for first time. They should come to church. They should be praying and be toiling. Why do you You stand up twice. When you go to the church, you stand up twice. That's fine. Why are you now being deceitful? You're not fully saved yet. Now you're just coming. Yeah, I, come, I, I have no experience this service the way I'm about to experience it today. <laughs> it's new. Yeah. But generally, actually, that's how I see it. And it gives me a better perspective to deal with people and just forgive them easily. Yeah. So and then... Okay, yeah. finish. Sorry, finish, finish. And, I mean, so far, at this point in my life, with what I've accrued to myself, I don't have anything to do, but so far, trying to... Like, when the Bible says try to put off any weight that easily beset us, these are one of those things. You have, We literally have, every one of us, you have, like, a long road to go. Mm. So having to be carrying all of these baggages and people. Yeah. So already yeah. having a predetermined mind about how you're going to deal with people will help you a lot, mm. especially in a place where you literally have to forgive every unbeliever, every, every person that's literally trying to trick in your faith and just yeah. distort your peace for, for only God knows what. Have it at the back of your mind. This one... 
needs to be saved. This one needs to be saved. This one will be all right. I don't want problem. And just it's it's not as simple as I'm saying it is. I mean, in real time experience is very hard, but mm. just try. Okay, thank you very much. So to round up the episode, I'd like to ask: so how do we get to a point of forgiveness? How do we? you know, extend that grace out as human beings because, you know, we always say that as humans, it's very hard to forgive. So what are the tips that we're going to give our audience to live with today on people that are struggling to forgive their parents, their siblings, boyfriend, whoever, Mm. you know, what are some tips that I would like to each that we can use moving forward? Mm. Yeah, I I think, I think if you're forgiven, Mm-hmm. If you are conscious of the fact that you're a forgiven person, it's easier to forgive and know that you you offend people yeah. probably more frequently than you think you do. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there are different levels to it, but forgiveness is forgiveness. If you if you if you've received forgiveness, just think about it. if God is able to continuously forgive you, then you should be willing to forgive. But like I said, Sha, ah, you people have not still answered me. That forgetting part mm-hmm. is it when you forget that your forgiveness is full? I think so. When you forget, yeah. I don't think you ever forget. I don't think you ever forget. I don't think you ever forget. So, so, you ever forget. So, mm-hmm. Okay, since you are the case study here, mm. when you remember, mm. how do you do? You remember it from a place of grief, anger. Oh or, yeah, oh yeah. How so, do you remember so it? So when, when I remember it, when I remember, it, I don't remember it from a place of grief or anger or vengeance or yeah, anymore. Yeah. But like I remember the scenario enough to not let it happen again. With anybody or even with the same person. That's so just that's just you, boundaries. You be, yeah, that's just you creating that's boundaries. That's creating boundaries. Yeah, 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 creating yeah. boundaries is yeah, good. Because no, remember, it's from the place of you are, you're trying to set boundaries back. for yourself. I mean, I think that's fine. But yeah. if you're trying to remember it from you are still angry, if you no, remember it like this, ah, I just want to kill him. Ah. No, not at all. Not at all. And, uh, my forgiveness is solid then. The one thing I'll say is I, I heard this quote. I think it was a quote. I'm always hearing quotes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I saw this quote where it was like, um, if you, when you forgive people, you give them mercy and you give yourself grace. Mm -hmm. You know, two things are being exchanged Mm -hmm. in that moment. And once you hold yourself from forgiving, you're holding yourself from grace and you're also holding that person from mercy. Mm -hmm. So it was a really like powerful thing that I heard that week. And I was just like, Mm, that makes a lot of sense because you're being merciful to that person and allow you, you're giving yourself it's grace to know sure. that yeah. Yeah. anything fits up yeah. and it's okay. So yes, I think I would tell the audience to just know that if you don't forgive, you are holding back two blessings that can go both ways, yeah. you yeah. know. So yeah. what about you, Jesse? Um, for me, before you can forgive someone, you have to So thank you guys so much for blessing my couch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if anybody here is fighting, forgive each other. Because let me ask you now. Uh, no, but I have the, is the producer outside. Mm. I'm producer? struggling to forgive the food that I've not eaten because <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> Masha, I don't leave their bread alone. As in, Jollof rice. Alone. But let me have the bread. Oh. Best. <laughs> All right. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you had a good time. Um, so follow us on all our social media platforms at the 66 pod and see you next time. See you Bye. next time. <laughs> 66. Yeah.